Hi everyone, it's Friday, it's assembly time, and um, unfortunately we can't do it in the hall together, so we are going to do uh, recorded assemblies like we went, like we did through um, through lockdown. So hopefully they'll be okay, and hopefully you'll enjoy them as much. Um, I've been told I'm not allowed to be unkind to year five for being late, but I'm sure they are watching this on time, so that's it with the year five jokes. I was told off for doing that, so we will... We'll crack on and we'll, this one will be a little bit shorter than normal because um, we've got lots of things that we'll start next week because we need a week of it in order for us to start. So we've got things like our awards, taking um, our attendance tickets, our reading tickets and our behaviour tickets. That will start next week for people to win a free book. So if you can't remember that or year three teachers, if you explain it to your children, they'll know all about that anyway, I'm sure. Um... What else are we going to do? So we're always going to do mathematics, but there won't be any this week or next week because that's done in a week, um, a sort of a, a week behind as well. We're going to do awards from each year group. Um, we're going to do um, a bit of cultural capital every assembly. So something, um, the best of what's been thought and said, if you remember. If, um, and again, that'll be something a little bit new to year three, maybe. But that'll be something you'll get the, the real hang of. So cultural capital. Um, it's just those wonderful things that, that f famous people, not necessarily even that famous, they might be just people that we know in the community that have said something brilliant and actually therefore mean something to us. So we're going to do something about cultural capital. Um, we're going to have a learning power of the week. So learning power of the week we're going to do as well. Um, we're going to do something to do with the school. So a little school thing. Today we're going to do the school values. Um, we've got team points. So uh, we've collected those. So we can do those this week. We're going to have a thought of the day. And I think by the time you've done that, that'll be it. You'll, you'll be ready to go out for golden time if you haven't done already. So let's crack on. Where should we start? Let's start with year three. We have been so proud of year three and how well you've all settled in. So let's start with your awards. So in Kilmer, um, we've got Rosie Matthews just for being a generally great child all the time and working hard all week. So well done, Rosie. And Jensen Brown for a brilliant effort in all lessons and great productivity. Productivity in week one from year three. Well done, Jensen. That is awesome. So, well done, you two in Kilmer. Um, in Barrow, we've got Hallie Kingdon for an outstanding learning attitude and care and attention to your learning. Well done, Hallie. And James Hill Roberts for beautiful listening in class and always trying your best. Love that. Can't ask any more than trying your best. Well done, uh, Barrett. In Tregarrick, we've got Leighton Harlow and Jasmine Rapley. So Leighton for such amazing work in maths this week. And um, Jasmine for brilliant presentation in all she does. In, in, sorry, I read that wrong. That's not Mr. Davey. For brilliant effort in all she does, including beautiful presentation. So well done, Jasmine. Great stuff. And in Trawarda, we've got Tilly Mae Phillips for demonstrating an outstanding attitude to learning in all lessons. And Gracie Wilkes for outstanding resilience this week. I'm really proud of you, Miss Hendy says. So well done, Year 3. What brilliant comments. We could not be more proud of you, Year 3s. So I want you all to give the person next to you a fake high five or a distanced elbow. Because you deserve it. So give yourselves a whoop whoop. Really impressed. Well done, you. I want to hear that whoop whoop. When I'm sitting in my office, I want to hear your whoop whoop. From uh, from here, so it's got to be nice and loud. Do you want to practice again? Whoop whoop! Well done, Year Three. Awesomeness. So let's move on, shall we? Um, let's move on to a bit of cultural capital. Now, I actually only found this out yesterday. It was something that Mr. Long was talking to me about, and I thought, you know what? What a lovely way to start our cultural capital. Now, you will have heard um, in the news um, over the over the holiday there was an awful lot of news about something called Black Lives Matters. And actually, I think uh, if you were um, in lo uh, in the, some of the bubbles where, uh, during lockdown, the, the teachers will have done some Black Lives Matter stuff with you. And basically, as it sounds, there are a lot of people who believe that actually people with uh, different colour skin do not ha maybe have the respect they deserve. They don't get the opportunities they deserve. And I believe that as a school, we need to recognise that. I think we need to really look at diversity and within that we are going to link it to cultural capital. So we're not we're not always going to, to link it to um, to Black Lives Matters and we're not even going to call it Black Lives Matters. We're going to call it diversity. And where possible, sometimes we're going to link it to um, cultural capital. So our cultural capital this week, um, 
is actually linked to Barack Obama. Now, Barack Obama, um, maybe tell, tell the person next to you who Barack Obama is. So you can pause the video. Who is Barack Obama? See if anybody knows. All right. OK, so if you paused it. So Barack Obama was the very first black American president. Now, I still, I am very surprised that it's taken this long to have a black president. However, we still haven't had a female president of America. So when we talk about diversity, it isn't just about black skin or um, women, or it's just about everybody. It's about talking about people as a whole and saying, actually, it doesn't matter what you are, who you are, you can all make this amazing contribution to society. So we're going to talk a little bit, just a little bit about Barack Obama. And Mr. Long told me this lovely story, and I thought it's, it's great to put in our assembly. So actually, he was on... Uh, a show a little while ago I mean he was on with Bear Grylls and if you know who Bear Grylls is he's a sort of um he's someone who does expeditions and he's someone who loves sort of wild camping and this sort of thing so actually he took Barack Obama he wasn't the serving president at the time I don't think but he took a Barack Obama on one of his wild things but they basically they go off grid um they go into the depths of nowhere and they have to try and survive so they eat sort of yucky things that perhaps we wouldn't eat but they have to eat something so um, Bear Grylls was talking to Barack Obama and he said, so um, what are your aspirations for your daughter? What, what do you want your daughter? Do you want her to get into politics? Do you want her to be famous? Do you want her to be this, that? Do you want her, you know, do you want her to represent her country in something? And do you know what he said? He said, I just want my daughter to be kind. Now, Mr. Long and I were talking in the staff room and thinking, out of all the aspirations you could have for your daughter, Somebody might argue that it's that's not really very high because the question was, would you like her to be a president? Would you like her to be a politician? Would you like her to run, you know, something for the country? And he said, no, I want her to be kind. And actually, when you think about it, she can still be kind and all of those other things. She could still be president of America one day. But the point is, he wants her to do it and be kind all the way through. So I think that's a brilliant bit of cultural capital. And I might end up putting that on the board You'll have seen our cultural capital board in reception. I might end up putting that on the board just to say, be kind, because that's what Barack Obama believes, actually. In all the things that his daughter could do, that's what, he, that's what she should do. So I thought that was brilliant. So that's our little bit of cultural capital for today. OK, let's go to, should we go to year six? Let's go to year six. So um, we've got, let's start with Gudrivi. Gudrivi, Charlotte Stevens, helpful, hardworking, a great first impression. And Mr. Um, Mr. Nicholson, can I echo that? Because Charlotte has been a delight in my maths lessons. So actually, what a great choice. So well done, Charlotte. And Harry Todd for great productivity in maths and works well with others. Well done, Harry. Really good, good to hear. And Gudrivi, you get a special mention. You get a special mention because um, Mrs. Sutton Rose has recognised that your behaviour at lunchtime was absolutely superb. So well done, uh, Kadrivi. And you can give yourselves one of these. What well an excellent uh, Kadrivi. Really good to hear. Um, in Lizard, we've got Harvey Drake for outstanding attitude in English and maths. Well done, Harvey. And we've got Heidi Moyes for fantastic effort, productivity, and quality in maths and English. Wow, Heidi. Effort, productivity, and quality in maths and English. You should be very proud of yourself. Well done. In Travos, we've got Scarlett Vigas for a brilliant attitude in outdoor games with fantastic tag rugby throwing skills. Well done, Scarlett. And Rhys Davis for fantastic vocabulary choices in his progress right. Well done, Rhys. And Pendine, we've got Bradley White for an awesome learning attitude and Ruby Dance for superb work all week. Really good. Well done, Year 6. And as we know, Year 6... You've got a lot, to, a lot to crack on with, a lot to catch up on, but you are doing brilliantly. As I walk up down the corridor, your behaviour at lunchtime is superb. Your all-round attitude to learning in terms of what you're doing in class is superb, so just keep it up. Well done you. Brilliant. Excellent. Well done you, six. Okay, let's go. Where should we go now? Let's do Learning Power of the Week. Now, Learning Power of the Week this week is, is one of our four R's. So, if you can again would you like to turn and tell your partner one of our four r's and i'm not going to go all through all four of them but i wonder if you can name them that would be good so have a go okay so our learning power of the week is relationships it's one of our four r's one of our four main branches of our learning power tree 
And relationships is massive. Absolutely massive. Because if you think about it, just think about it from a school perspective. Don't worry about home or in the street or in a cafe. Just think about it from school. You think about how many positive relationships there are in school. There is the relationship between you and your peers, you and your friends, which is potentially a very easy relationship because it's, it's someone that you get on with and you like and you get on with. There's also then a relationship with your peers who isn't your friend. Now, that's not to say you don't like them, but that's just to say that perhaps they're not in your close friendship group. You still have to have a very good relationship with that person. You've then got the relationship between you and your teaching assistant or your teacher or me or lunchtime supervisor or the office staff. So you've got those relationships as well, which obviously are different to the relationships with your friends because it's, it's an adult. So, you, you know, naturally you behave a little bit differently. But then you've also got relationships between staff. So you've got a relationship between me and the teachers, the teacher assistants and so on. And what's really important in school is that all of those relationships are respectful and positive. And again, like Barack Obama said, you are being kind to each other. It is really important that actually those relationships are strong. And you know what? In this school, they really are. They really are. You'll never see teachers bickering in the corridor. And actually, do you know what? I rarely see children bickering anywhere. I don't, but we don't have children falling out in the playground a huge amount. You are brilliant at your relationships. Sometimes people have to be reminded. Sometimes people fall out. That's natural. Um, sometimes people say, oh, they're bullying me. And, but actually, sometimes it's not even that. It's just the fact that they've fallen out, they, they're good friends, and they're just, they've had a, a bit of a disagreement, and therefore they fall out. But actually, the strength of your relationship shows that actually you get back with that person pretty quick. It very rarely lasts, and that I'm really proud of. I think that's a real strength of our school, is that the relationships are so strong. So, keep those relationships strong. Keep that respect for your adults in, your, in the school. But also, we reciprocate that. We respect you back as well, because it's really important that we do that. Because we, we love having you in our school, so we respect you when you come in. And I know that as a result of that, the school just flows and it works brilliantly. So well done, everyone, for that. So that's our Learning Power of the Week, relationships. Okay, where shall we go next? Let's do year five. So year five. In Fistral, we've got Kayla Hutchings for making the effort to ensure that all pupils in Fistral are happy. That's a nice quality. Well done, Kayla. Um, Max Domsel for sharing his amazing knowledge of space with the class. I've heard that Max's knowledge about space is awesome. So well done, Max. That's really good to hear. Um, in Senon, we've got Harvey Dart for great perseverance in rounding. And Jasmine Richards for excellent resilience in her learning. Well done, Jasmine. And I know that Jasmine wasn't feeling great this week. So the fact that you've been nominated, Jasmine, for an award for your resilience in learning as well is even better. Because sometimes when we're not feeling great, the temptation is to let our learning just, oh, I can't be bothered. But actually, you haven't done that. I'm really proud of you for that. Well done, Jasmine. Uh, in Pulse F, we've got Josie Davis for a brilliant learning attitude, full of enthusiasm. And Josie, that's your first full week with us. So to get an award is very impressive. Well done, Josie. And Patrick Frost for adapting well in lessons, particularly maths. Well done, Patrick. Lovely to hear. And Triana, another, another newbie. Well done, Penny. Penny Whittingham Ford, a superb start to Carby or school life. Again, your first full week. And every time we see you go out, you're beaming with a smile. So well done. You must be enjoying uh, your time in Triana. And Bo Doherty for being a helpful classmate. Well done, Bo. That's nice to hear. Mr. Walker's obviously reliant on you for being, being helpful. That's really good. Well done. So well done, Year 5. Good stuff. Excellent. Okay. Um, shall we do team points? Let's do some team points. So, team points today. Um, obviously, it's the first week. So whoever wins this is, at the moment, the winner for the half-term total as well. So the weekly score... In fourth place with 34 points, give yourself a cheer, is Windsor. Ooh, ooh. Well done, Windsor. In third place with 37 points, it's Carnarvon. Ooh, ooh. Well done, Carnarvon. Very impressive. And then, I don't know if we've ever had it in the first week, we've got joint winners for the top. We've got Balmoral and Kalani with 45 points. So well done, you two. Brilliant to see. So... Catch up next time, Windsor and Carnarvon. I really go for those team points, so let's see if we can change that half-term total next time. Well done. Okay, let's move on to our values. 
So those of you that have been with us even just for a year, so even year fours, year fives and year sixes, you should know our seven values because actually not only do we talk about them quite a lot, but also they're on pretty much every door that you see as you walk through school. They have our seven golden values and our seven golden rules and they're linked. The values linked to the rules, the rules linked to the values. So I wonder if any class can name all seven values. So I'm going to, again, your teacher might want to pause it or not, up to you. But I wonder if you can quickly either popcorn it or just put your hand up or tell a partner what are our seven golden values? Because they are really, really important. We chose them for a reason. So have a go. OK, now, our seven golden values are, let's see who got them. And if you knew all seven, well done. They are respect, tolerance, aspiration, commitment, honesty, pride and responsibility. Now, we believe at this school that if you are those seven things, if you've got those seven values, you are a pretty awesome human being. So if you think about it, respect. If you respect others, you respect yourselves, you respect the equipment, you respect the, the school, then behaviour, for example, is, is perfect because you've got respect. You know, you put your hand up to speak, you don't shout out. That's respect for others. So keep that respect up, all right? Tolerance. Tolerance is an interesting one because it's basically saying you accept other people's differences. You know, everybody's different. We're all different. We've all got lots of different qualities about ourselves. And you, you, tolerance is one of those things that we, we are to make sure that those differences, you know, you don't, you don't pick up on those differences. You don't have a go at those differences. You tolerate. You are tolerant. It's really good. Uh, the next one is aspiration. Now, aspiration is where we reach for the stars. It's kind of one of those things where you say, do you know what? Aspiration could be lots of things. It could be quite a little thing. It might be, do you know what, I'm going to aspire to go for silver, not bronze today. That could be an aspiration. But it might even be, do you know what, I want to be Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. That is also an aspiration. Why not? Who, who says that the next Prime Minister, maybe not actually, maybe not the next Prime Minister, but who says that a Prime Minister in the future will not be somebody who's currently sitting in the school? Maybe one of the teachers. <gasps> that would be cool, wouldn't it? Prime Minister. Who could we have as Prime Minister in this school? Prime Minister James. Wow, Mr James as Prime Minister. He could draw little, he could draw little um, caricatures of all the MPs. That would be good. So it might be that Mr James is sitting in his classroom right now aspiring to be Prime Minister. But you need that aspiration because then you aim high. OK, the next one is commitment. Now, commitment you can show in lots of ways. You can show commitment to a club. You can show commitment to lots of things. One of the main things we show commitment to is our learning. We commit to our learning because if you don't commit, it's going to be a bit half done. It's going to be a bit kind of meh, meh. It's neither here nor there. But if you commit, chances are it'll be pretty darn good. Honesty. Honesty is one of my faves because I think that generally if people are honest, the world just goes a little bit smoother. You know, the number of times I've asked people, I don't know. Did you kick the football up on the roof? No, no, it wasn't me. It was actually, we've got a whole playground of people that saw you do it. So just be honest. Just be honest. And actually, all your teachers will tell you that if you're honest first time, it makes everything a lot better. You might get a slap on the wrist. You might even get sent to Mrs Maynard. But the point is, if you're honest about something, it makes it a darn sight better. So well done. Pride. Now, um, during lockdown, there has been um, reruns of one of my favourite programmes, which is um, Miranda. And anyone that watch Miranda, she often holds up a, a thing with a picture up here. And it says, what have you done today to make you feel proud? And it is Heather Small singing the proud song. It is a good song. Now, it's basically, I think you should have that going through your head all the time. What have you done today to make yourself feel proud? Because if you always aim to do something that makes you feel proud, you're kind of, you're respecting somebody. You might be being tolerant of something. You might aspire to it. You might, you might be committed to your learning. You might have been honest about something. It's all of those things, isn't it? You might have shown great responsibility for something. But because you were proud of that, well done. And you should be proud of yourself sometimes. The number of times I've heard you and say, I'm really proud of myself. Good. Because we're proud of you. So why shouldn't you be proud of yourself? So well done. So pride is a good one. And then the last one is responsibility. That is saying that you are responsible for your own behaviour. Nobody else is responsible. So if somebody says, oh, he made me do it. No, he didn't. If you behaved in a way that perhaps isn't as good as our behaviour should be, there's no point you saying, oh, he made me do it because he didn't. 
You did it yourself. So be responsible for your own um, behavior and be responsible for your own learning as well. You know, you are responsible for that. The other thing as well is be responsible for your own equipment. Number of times we, um, people say to me, I've got a ruler, I've got a pen, I've got a pencil, I've got rubber. Just be responsible, bring it all in. So, seven values, learn them, be them, all right? Really good. Okay, I think that's it, isn't it, year four? Have we finished year four? Should we, should we stop there? No, should we do the year four awards? All right, we'll do the year four awards. So, in year four, in FOI, Nikita Johnson and Megan Sellers, both for the same reason, for having outstanding attitudes to learning in our first week of maths and English lessons. So well done, girls. That's really good to hear. Um, in Ottery, James Lally for producing some excellent writing this week. Keep it up, James. I am super proud of that. When we talk about pride, I know that writing is something that is not your fave. It's not something that you particularly enjoy. But what a wonderful comment to read on a Friday morning that actually you have done some excellent writing. I'm very proud of that. And Holly Farndale for settling wonderfully into the new school year. Well done, Holly. That's good to hear. Um, in Liner, we've got Thomas Shields and uh, Ayla Bennett. Again, same reasons for confidently taking part in all our lessons this week and being amazing collaborators. Well done. Shows that you're all of those values when you collaborate as well, because you're showing respect for somebody. Well done. There's lots of things you're doing in there. So well done, you two. And in Tamar, we've got Leah Lesamore for amazing effort all week, especially impressing in Mrs. Prescott's reading skills lessons. Hey, Leah, I love it when you impress more than one person. That means that Mrs. Um, Prescott has gone back to Mr. Smith and said, um, oh, God, tell you what, tell you what Leah's done brilliantly in reading. And that means that Mr. Smith is impressed as well. Well done, Leah. And Charlie Leslie for a great positive attitude all week, including super sharp mental math skills. Wow. Well done, Charlie. I'd like to see these super sharp mental math skills at some point. Well done, you. So, by the time next week we do attendance ticket, behaviour ticket, reading ticket, uh, and then in a couple of weeks we'll be doing um, uh, mathletics and things like that. There'll be lots of things that we will put in as well. So, that is our assembly for today. Now, we're going to end with a thought for the day. Because our thought for the day, um, as you know, every day we should be doing um, an element of something called a daily act of collective worship. And our daily act of collective worship is just something where it could be a religious thing. It could be something linked to a, a teaching of, of God. It could be something from the Bible. But it doesn't have to be. It could be something that is just a reflection or something that is awesome, something that has awe and wonder in it, or just something that is a thought. And I'm today, I'm not always going to do this, but today I'm going to link my thought to my cultural capital. And my thought for the day is just exactly what Barack Obama says, be kind. Because actually, when we talk about our values, that's his aspiration for his daughter. But it's also, I would say, my aspiration for my children and my aspiration for all of the children in this school. We've got 360 odd children in this school. And you imagine if every single one of them was kind, we wouldn't have any problems of any sort ever, ever, ever again. Because you would be kind. You'd be kind to your teachers. You'd be kind to your friends. You'd be kind to your other children in your class. You're just kind to everyone. So my thought for the day is this. Be kind. Okay. Well done for listening so beautifully. I'm going to really enjoy doing these assemblies. Um, have a lovely day. Have a great weekend. It's going to be a really nice week next week. Lots of lovely weather. So lots of things to look forward to next week as well. And I'll see you around school today. All right. Take care. Bye.